Welcome to another edition of the Leaders Room. The Leaders Room is an initiative of the ECLIF Leadership and Governance Center. In this space, we invite leaders from all walks of the life to talk to us about their values, their life purpose, and the mindset that keeps them moving forward when they confront resistance and challenges. My name is Michael Koster and I'll be your host today. Joining us is Budi Suhardi. Budi used to be a high-flying pilot for a major international airline. But one day in 1999, all of that changed as he, his wife, and his children watched a television show. He'll talk to you about what that change was, and we'll ask him questions about what were the values behind the change that it, that incident brought to his life, and we'll explore with him the challenges that he faced and how he overcame them. Booty, welcome to the Leaders Room. Thank you, Michael. Booty, would you start by just giving us, in, in a couple of minutes, a brief synopsis of what happened on that, I don't want to say fateful night, maybe the, that transformational night in 1999. Yes, on the evening, uh, it was supposed to be our special evening because my wife and I and family, the whole family actually, we are uh, having a special dinner to remember our good times and we were living in Korea for nine years. I brought in with me all the special meals from Korea. And on the evening as well, we were planning to travel around the world for our holiday trips. 33 days, been based on the job that I'm having, I'm entitled to travel first class. But while we were having our dinner, we saw a television program broadcasting about mm -hmm. the condition of people who are living in the refugee camps, mm -hmm. which is much enduring some sort of uh, 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 survival kind of living. They have nothing, they have no certainties, and they have no proper food, no pro proper place, and very miserable. And that re those refugees were where, Booty? Uh, the refugees uh, were the East Timor refugees, okay. uh, right after the separation between East Timor and West Timor. Okay. Living in the, uh, the borders between Indonesia and uh, East Timor. Okay, so you're watching the show on TV. Yes, watching the show on TV. Be careful to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> Can change your life. So that condition uh, uh, got me in, and my wife as well that uh, this is not fair. I'm having so-called, I may have put it like very comfortable kind of living. Everything nice, secure, safe and clean. Well, other people, they don't have everything. And plus uncertainties about what's the next, uh, what, what's the next day will be for them to eat. So derived from there, my wife and I uh, uh, thinking about it, and uh, we are very much affected by the, the scenery that we have. So at 11 o'clock, after prayers, my wife and I pray together and at 11 o'clock we decided, okay, let's uh, postpone our holiday and visit the refugees at the camps instead. Then what's happened? So, so let me make sure I have this straight. You and your wife, and I'm assuming your kids, mm -hmm. decided to postpone mm -hmm. an around-the-world trip mm -hmm. that was going to be for 30-plus days, yes. and you would, be, would have been traveling mm -hmm. in first class all that. Mm -hmm. You set that aside mm -hmm. because you saw something that you said was not right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so what are the value for, in Eclipse language, mm -hmm. what happened for you sounds like a mismatch between what you hold mm -hmm. uh, to be true and what you value and what you see as something non-negotiable mm -hmm. and what you were experiencing in your environment, seeing that show on TV. And you decided, I needed to do something about that. What were the values behind that? What motivated you to postpone that trip? Yeah, we have been enduring good life. and. Uh, it's something normal, yes. right. living in a comfortable you know, environment is, is normal to us. But uh, those people who we saw, it, it's, it's not, not fair. They don't even have the minimums. So, you know, we just want to share what we are blessed with. It's not ours. Everything is from uh, what is, uh, God's blessing that we are having. So what we are giving is actually uh, our time. It's from God. What we have, wealth, this and that, is also it's blessing. So we're sharing what we are blessed with. It's nothing but us. Okay. Mm. So what, 
what initially turned out to be just simply going over and taking 500, you know, not pounds, grams or something over there, turned out to be something a lot more and a lot longer. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yes, we, we were planning to bring uh, 500 kilograms Kilo max, yeah. kilogram, kilogram. Uh, especially uh, items or things that are useful for the children. Right. The innocent, miserable children, you know, because they have to enjoy this kind of living. So, uh, yes, we decided, okay, 500 kilograms, okay. Then at the end of the day, actually, from Singapore alone, we managed to collect 987 kilograms, almost one ton. And then we, uh, when we brought off to Jakarta, with the money we committed to spend, $10,000 US, and with money that friends was asking, uh, want to participate, and uh, 57000 US. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of money, so go to Jakarta. And at Jakarta, we did our shopping, and from uh, almost one ton, become eight tons plus. Wow. <laughs> then it comes the headache, how to bring them across. Then, uh, well, it's, uh, well, the trip itself from Singapore to Jakarta is quite dramatic. And from Jakarta to even to the, to the, uh, to the West Timor mm -hmm. itself right. is full of miracles. And then in, in West Timor itself, actually, we did our shopping again. And we shop, shop, shop. And at the end of the day, from original plan of 500 kilograms, we end up more than 40 tons. 40 tons. <laughs> wow. Now, you were just originally, though, planning to go to deliver mm -hmm. those goods mm -hmm. and then come home. Yes. Uh, but I don't think it ended up working that way for you, <laughs> did it? Yes. Uh, we, we did it a uh, few times. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, except that we are getting smarter because we, we will buy things locally there instead of all the way from Singapore and from Jakarta again. And then we did a few trips, you know, and then after a few trips, uh, is it a useful trip? Yes. Is it helping people? Yes. But giving food to the people, it's lasting maybe a week at the most. Or, and then giving clothing to people who uh, does not have, who don't have water, in mm -hmm. a few weeks will become wrecks. You give utensils, this and that, you know, it's basically, uh, it will not, not last very long. No, so the, there's no, nothing significant about how to change the condition. Right. So from there, actually, my wife and I uh, think again, and then how can we do something which is long lasting, more significant, and give more impact mm -hmm. to maybe less individuals, but more meaningful. Right. So that's why we uh, decided, okay, let's look after the children. How? Then we decided to rent a house, fill up with four, very miserable children because the children we are having, uh, have, we are having were full of past and wounds. These and that, uh, you don't want to know about it. Right. And then uh, from four children, from six, eight, and then ten. When uh, ten children, then uh, two children were taken away by other people. So the children's distance relative, because of the rumors that people are spreading that my family and I are able to live in Singapore because we were or we are selling babies so yeah. it's very sad but yeah. anyway more children coming coming and and come up a point whereby the rented house is not enough mm. so we need to right have our own place right out of space yeah. so what did you do then <laughs> then we are trying to think hey we have to build our own place and how where then we, we remembered that back then 1992 which is eight years before Actually, we bought a land in Timor without seeing it, without looking at it, without stepping our foot on it. Okay. Why? Because at that time, uh, we were having uh, uh, relatives asking our help for his or her friends who are coming with the family to Jakarta, or who wants to uh, get the daughter foot fixed because of the accident that they're having at home. Then their food is accidentally went into the boiling uh, so called, uh, palm sugar making. So the food is like uh, duck feet, you know, they join up together. Oh. And 10 year old girl. So very sad. So they, want, they uh, have money but limited to reduce their burden. Uh, our friend reduced it. Can they stay at your place? And we have, uh, well, we have a house, we have, why not stay at our house? 
So they stay at our house. And uh, when we brought them to the hospital, actually the money is not enough for the operation. <laughs> uh, they brought 7 million, the operation cost uh, 13 million. Uh, my wife is like, okay, top up. So we top up. Uh, again, nothing, uh, what we have is actually blessings anyway. So we mm -hmm. share what we are blessed with. So after the treatment's done, and also outpatient and stay at our house, you know, check up, done. One month later, right. after stay 31 days at our place, then the, the father of that girl uh, asking us to, to meet up in after dinner. So, and on the evening, I happened to be just coming back from Seoul, from flying. So yeah, we have uh, dinner nicely, and after dinner, we have a conversation. And on the conversation, the man is actually, uh, of course, the family thanking us. Thank mm -hmm. you for letting us stay here at your house. Thank you for topping up the medical fee to our you know, children's treatment, this and that. But, hey, is it possible for you to help us one more? Oh, yeah. We one can, more. Yeah, if I can help you, I, I, we can be helpful, more than happy to do it. So, uh, what is it? Uh, can you buy us a second-hand MP3 car, please? Oh, I'm a salary man. No, I'm not a rich man. Right. Uh, no, uh, well, I'm very rich because God is rich. Anyway, um, he asked us uh, to buy a second hand car, uh, MPV, because uh, for the time being, they are doing business using motorcycle in the, in the form of carrying uh, uh, handicrafts, locally made handicrafts. Right. And uh, during rain day, rainy days, will affect it, you know, so they want more secure. Uh, for conditions for transportation, right. Right. and more uh, month of the merchandise. No? Right. So mm, I'm quite reluctant to give, to be honest. Right. But my wife pulled me in inside the house, uh, the inside room. Then, honey, uh, I think we can do it. You know? So my wife, okay, let's do it. So we bought a local newspaper, look for advertisements, and actually the next day we found an eight-year-old car. And uh, of course, they don't have money, so we brought the car to the garage, fixed it, make sure the brake lining, brake condition, everything is okay. Right. And then uh, the even we put that time, put new batteries as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, until when things done, and then of course we top up the fuel and give them more money for the, for them to eat on the way from Jakarta to Surabaya, uh, Surabaya to Timor by. Uh, by ship, of course, we give money for the ship, <laughs> everything, all the way. <laughs> uh, but before they left our house, the wife was uh, asking us, can we have your address, please, complete address and your name, so I can send you a message that when we're arriving there safely, give you a uh, no right. notification. Oh, sure. At that time, my wife and I, we just bought an apartment and also process some uh, uh, land deal. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of copy of her ID, so my wife just simply, oh, take my, one of my ID. Okay, mm -hmm. so three months later, an envelope A4 size came, and inside of the envelope is a land certificate, and then uh, on my wife's name. Wow, oh, this is false, uh, force, force purchase. So we, you know, so we went to, to Timor. We asked for the the particular price of the land, and we pay for it in full without seeing the land. And what Only. Now the year 2000. Yeah. What did you do with that land then? Nothing. Uh, okay, but just forgotten. Okay, but somewhere along the line, you said you mo you were running out of space in that house, mm -hmm. and you went to some other type of building. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that other building. You you ended up building an orphanage, didn't? You? Yeah. 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 So in the year 2000, yeah, eight years after 1992, then we remembered that we bought land, right, without seeing it. Then, oh, we bought land eight years ago. So, oh, let's find it. So then we try to find the land, and uh, it's discouraging the, because the road is very bad. Even the cycle, you have to step down. Right. And uh, yeah, now that is the orphanage located. So you started out in a rented house mm -hmm. up to about 40, 48 children. Uh, no, no, rented house, house? Uh, uh, 12 children. 12 children. But then you went to an orf the orphanage that you built, you and your mm -hmm. wife Peggy. It went to, what, about 48? But today you have 148 children yes. in there? Okay. Yes. So in 1999, you have this transformative experience. 
And it sounds like some of the values behind that transformative experience was <laughs> your faith, mm -hmm. your belief in giving back, mm -hmm. and writing things that you see as injustices or unfairnesses. Did you ever see yourself, though, mm -hmm. having a life purpose that said, I'm going to be the father for 148 children? Did you ever imagine that? To be honest, yeah. no. no. <laughs> I just do what's uh, necessary to be done. And, and uh, it's nice to, to be able to be at the giving part, right. the receiving part. And I know for sure that uh, living in poverty is not nice. Right because I lived that life before. When in my childhood, my father passed away when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. He was uh, one of the uh, Indonesian uh, university lecturer and my, wife, my uh, um, late father also the founder of one of the university in my hometown. Mm -hmm. When my father passed away right away as a car, uh, uh, traffic accident and I have to go through, we went through life, the whole family, where to have one decent meal a day is a luxury already. Right. So, so you had personal experience yeah. with that. Idea. Yeah. And, and so when you were watching that television mm -hmm. show, seeing people not mm -hmm. having even one meal a mm -hmm. day, you could connect with them. Of course, okay. yeah, of course. All right, so you've described to me before we started recording uh, here at the leaders room, <laughs> you described to me that it's been a series of one miracle after another. Yes. When you weren't sure how something was going to get from destination A to destination B, a miracle happened. A ship came along, a flight came along. Yeah. When you needed money, a miracle happened mm -hmm. and the money appeared. Mm -hmm. I can't believe though that there's been a succession of one miracle after another mm -hmm. without some type of a gap <laughs> where you find yourself in a dark spot, where you find yourself thinking, how am I going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Have you been in that spot? And if yes, what was the mental energy you needed to get out of that? Uh, we are created with hardware and software. You know, we, we are blessed with complete uh, things uh, physically. You know, and then uh, we have our limitations. Yet again, we can do our best. So what we have to do to just do our best then your best will end up into something for example this happened not too long ago in uh, 2012 mm -hmm. and before that I have so many other miracles that I can show to you I can uh, share with you but this is 2012 right on that Sunday I was invited to conduct a sermon in a church in Singapore right very happy because uh, the uh, the attendance were youth and uh, you no know, vibrant. Uh, I like young people, you know, mm -hmm. to be positive. Right. You know, and my message was uh, encouragement to do their best mm -hmm. according to the norms, you know, and values that are existing. And uh, we're having very good relationship with them. So, uh, after the sermons done. We are fellowshipping, mm -hmm. having meals, talking again with everybody. Right. End up, I arrive at my house, at, uh, the sermon is at 9, you know, and I arrive at my house at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., just throw myself on the couch, open my shoes, then my phone rang. And the first call, uh, when I, uh, the, I pick up the call, uh, well, the guy called me, uh, Pastor Budi. Oh, Call me pastor. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, oh, who is it? Oh, this is uh, Pastor Stephanus. Oh, yes. Yes, Pastor, what can I do for you? I heard that you were giving a sermon this morning in, in the church. Yes, I did. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, can you do the same thing at our church? Oh, if I'm in Singapore and have the time, more than happy to do it. When? Today. Excuse me, today. Uh, what time? 5 p.m. And it's 3 now. <laughs> Three now. <laughs> on goes the shoes. Yeah. No. Okay. Three. In my head here, yeah, that's. Uh, why not? Why not? So come out to my mouth. You know. Why not? Sure. <sighs> well, actually, I just. So I. Uh, and and you know, and undress myself. I put my pajamas. Really in pajamas. I throw my bag.